Over the years, I've observed that when we start in entrepreneurship, and when we, we even when we start a new business, we have this tendency to think that our business is going to be um, this thing, this object, or maybe it's a we you know we can compare it to a piece of art or a book or something that we create and then it's done. We, in my opinion, my experience, we underestimate the true evolutionary nature of a business. So instead of comparing a business with something that feels finished, like a finished product, I prefer to compare businesses with uh, plants, like the one you see here in my background, <laughs> or a plant, a tree, a flower, uh, something that is organic and that evolves over time and through the, the the seasons. And when you when you start thinking like this, um, you you're you're just gonna make uh, your life a lot easier, a lot easier. Your your expectations are gonna change. Are gonna become more realistic. Um, and anything that you're gonna see. Uh, inside or outside your business, related to your business, is going to really feel like um, a work in progress, more of a process or a practice versus a project. Because when you have a project, typically the nature of a project that is that, you know, it starts, it has a middle, you're, it's ongoing, and then it's done. It's finished. You deliver something that is, uh, is fixed. But if you start thinking like this, you're going to really realize that your business is an ongoing prototype. It is never finished. It is never done. However, it's due. You know, at, at some points, you're going to have to meet the reality and you're going to have to meet the, your clients wherever they are and your financial uh, requirements, your financial needs. And that's when I say that your business is due, right? <laughs> so, you know, if I if I work with clients and and I promise that we deliver something for, for them and we create something for them. Um, we, we agree on the terms and the dates and that is when your business is due, right? That is when, it, when people expect it. But the big picture, in the big picture, your business is, is constantly changing and probably, um, probably faster and more drastically than you can ever imagine. I, I, I say this because I see so many entrepreneurs and that included me in the past, in the beginning, you know, believing that um, things like that. So, well, I'm going to work on my message. I'm going to work on my positioning. I'm going to work on my processes. And once this is done, I'm going to be successful. Once this is uh, complete and established, I'm just going to be, I don't know, more relaxed and uh, richer and wealthier and I'm not going to have to worry about anything and then I, I will be able to take a vacation maybe and so we tend to delay further out um, the the joy and the interesting part of the life of an entrepreneur and we do this and then we get disappointed because we realize that well my gosh it took so much more time than, than, we, than what we expected instead of this I encourage you to look at your business and look at, at what you do in, in your business as a series of, of loops. You know, when things start and they emerge and then you learn something, you create something and then you, then you, you put it out there and then, hey, it's time to maybe create another version. I think that software companies have really embraced that mentality. Um, in the past, I'm saying maybe 10, 20, more like 20 years ago, uh, Microsoft, for instance, would release a version of their Windows software about once a year, sometimes once every other year, two or three years sometimes. But with uh, more technological development and the change in the mindset of, about how we develop software, we all noticed that now software is never done, but it's always due. There's always an upgraded version. Like right now I'm using Zoom to uh, record this video and you know, uh, sometimes several times in the month, 
uh, you know, Zoom updates and there is a new version with new features. It's because the focus is really on serving clients versus, uh, you know, managing internal software process development more rigid, rigidly. We, we, know, we, we don't care so much about that. It's all about the value creation, the value that we can create for our clients. So if you adapt the mentality that I was just talking about, the mentality of the, a business as an organism, as something that grows, that goes through seasons, that will um, you know, struggle when, when, when things get cold and, and the weather, the, the seasons is a, little, um, is a little harsh, but that will flourish again, what you're going to see is that you're going to be a lot agile in the way you approach uh, entrepreneurship. I want to uh, give you and, and show you a very concrete example for where you can apply this, this mindset. And it's, your, it's, it's when you, you develop your services. I recently did a workshop on productized services and I shared with the, the participants, the, the, uh, the audience, this was one of my uh, end of the month uh, Thursday uh, free to attend workshops. And I shared um, the following diagram with them that I'd like to share with you. Now there, if I can get to my uh, share buttons, there you go. Uh, so as you can see on, on this diagram right here, uh, this is how I, I think of building what I call productized services. So this is the process for how to productize a service. Uh, quick recap or quick summary of what is a productized service a productized service is a service that is that you have standardized, that you have packaged, and that you uh, sell uh, to a given you know, uh, type of clients um, the same way, or, you know, always the same way. And you and you and you and you post the price on your website and you publish it, and basically um, everyone gets the service for the same price with the same length, the same characteristics. Services are more most of the time thought as things that we do in a custom manner, but when they are productized, they feel more like a product you can grab off the shelf. They're standardized uh, and you can repeat them and, they, and, and productized services have lots and lots of benefits. Um, you know, they are more scalable, they're more, uh, you can really better control their profitability. You can also, through your experience, gather comparable data as far as the results you deliver to your clients are concerned or how people experience the service. So this is a very simple and authentic and realistic process for how you think about developing your services and, and maybe how you think about developing your whole entire, your, your, your whole business. It starts with step number one and it starts with having a, a strong focus on your potential clients. Your first objective here in step one is to understand uh, at, 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 a, at a level that as deep as possible, uh, what problem you can solve, what need you can fulfill, what want you can really uh, also fulfill for your clients. So it starts with a conversation. That's why I put an, an icon here on this, uh, on this on this diagram in the understand phase. It's the initial um, alignment between your assumptions, your strategic assumptions, you know, strategy is all about assumptions. We assume that we will be able to serve a given market or slice of the market. And then we go meet people and we, we learn about who they are, their life, what, what they are used to already buy, how they operate, how they, how they, they go through their day. And we're trying to find ways to uh, meet each other. So pr really productizing a service and building a successful and authentic uh, business, an authentic business starts with a human relationship. That's how it starts by, it starts with dialogue. The next step is going to be about ideation based on your, on your, gather on, on the information you gathered and hopefully you're you're listening well to your to the people you meet in the understand phase you're going to start to have ideas it's going to you know you're going to use your creative energy 
and you're going to start thinking about ways you could help uh that you know people that 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 you've met there you know and a lot of the time i really encourage you to think outside the box and and brainstorm and really try to imagine all the ways you could help people go from one point to the other like how can you help them navigate this journey of transformation say they want to be better at managing their personal finance and you're your personal advisor what are all the ideas uh, that um, you know you could put in front of them what are all the possibilities all the things you could you could do to help them do that you could teach you could train um, you could do it for them uh, you could create an app that helps them do that you could create a paper journal. Um, I have one here for you know to run my business. But what about a paper journal specifically for, for for financial and, and personal finances? I mean, you know, the sky is really the limit. The third the third step is to try is to prototype, and that's when the mindset of the entrepreneur of the authentic entrepreneur comes in full force and full benefits. If you if you accept that your business will never be done, but always do, what you're gonna do there is that you're gonna lower the bar, lower your expectations. You're going to be more willing, less stressed about um, putting together something that feels like a, maybe a first draft initially. Something that uh, is what some, of the, some people call a minimally viable product you know, a, 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 or a service minimally valuable service, a service that just fulfills uh, enough that people can see value and that you can deliver comfortably. Maybe you stretch your, your, your comfort zone a little bit. But as this you know icon here that I put on this diagram right there, uh, right here, <laughs> indicates it's like a paper airplane. It just flies, just flies enough. But when it crashes, it's not destroyed. You just pick it up and, and, and tweak it a little bit. The same goes for your service in your business. The fourth step is now to deliver and keeping a growth mindset. So your, your inner narrative has to be about growth and learning and experimenting where you're going to gather super important data. That's why I put a little ruler here. You're going to deliver with a little truck. You're bringing it. You're bringing the service to your client. And you're going to observe how do they use it? How do you deliver it? Like how much time do you spend? Uh, is it more, much more than you thought? Are there areas where you feel like, yeah, it's actually working well and others where you think, okay, next time I'm going to do differently. I'm going to use a different tool and so on. These are the four, the four steps that I was able to map out for you to really simplify this productization of your services process. Now, this is just from one loop, but if you if you really think about how your business grows over time, and I have checked with other entrepreneurs because I thought, okay, well maybe it's just me, maybe I I just see this, but but more experienced entrepreneur will really see this, and they they they're gonna see this this thing is that how to build them, how to build your 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 productized services, how to build your 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 business. You know, it's version after version after version after version after version. Um, this morning, I was meeting with a colleague and I was sharing with her that since I launched MetaHelm in 2016, so it will be about eight years in October, next October, I am probably on version eight of MetaHelm. Uh, the business model has evolved, the services evolve, the type of clients that I, I, I serve evolve. But there is always a common thread. And that common thread, after a few years, I noticed that that common thread was about helping experts, helping people with ideas, helping people with intangible value in their head and their heart that they are seeking to, to uh, monetize. They're, they're seeking to um, use it to create wealth while they also... Uh, believe that their business is also fulfilling their mission. Their mission. So that's the short explanation for the purpose of MetaHelm. And I was able to notice that purpose because I noticed those versions of my business evolving. So if you feel if you feel like your your business is 
feels like it's 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 not there yet and it's not stable yet or um it feels like it needs another version don't worry about this that's the core message here in this video it evolves over time it's normal it's natural and in fact i would highly encourage you that you don't start don't try to resist those cycles but instead embrace them and accelerate, accelerate and dive in them and accelerate um, the number of cycles you can even uh, go through within a year, a month, sometime within a week. I see this everywhere with my business. I'll give you another example. Um, I sold uh, three times the, the, the same service uh, in a matter of about six or, six or eight weeks uh, to a client and that's a diagnostic phase. And I learned. I was learning so quickly from one client to to, uh, to 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 the next. So I sold it to three clients. I was I I, I was learning so quickly that um, each of these services had a different names. I was naming them differently. And in the beginning, you know, my <laughs> my inner narrative, my my one of my saboteurs uh, inside, one of my judges inside, was telling me, "Well, you can't do that. You know, it's uh, you have to you have to be stable. You have to." You have to really reassure people by sh by showing that there there is continuity in your services. And I thought, who cares? <laughs> no one, no one will go to my website. Nobody is is uh, you know is wasting their time staring at my website and observing how many times I change my 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 you know the way I describe my services. And if they do well, okay, great for them. And what what does it matter? You know, doesn't matter. So lower your expectations, give yourself, um, you know, operate with compassion with yourself and notice that really embracing your creative energy and changing all the time is actually so much more beneficial to uh, how you help people, how you operate your business. It's just, it's just so much more fun too. And you are, you are probably an entrepreneurial creator. You are an entrepreneurial expert. And, and if you if you have that in you, if you have those ideas that you know that pop from your mind and and you're thinking about creating different things all the time, just let that energy flow and remind and remember the cycles that I've I've, I've just showed you. And it's just a spiral. Like this is how we we experience life. You know, we go through seasons. There are four seasons a year. We go through months. There we go through the cycle of the day. There are per, times in the day that when we sleep, times when we're up. And it's exactly the same for a business. So if somebody tells you, well, first you have to decide what your messaging is and your strategy and your planning. And once this is in place, then you can launch or or you you can you can move on. And this is, you know, be careful with that mindset. It might be too rigid for you. Maybe it's good for you. I don't know. But you know, here at Meta Hellman, with all the people we we serve, we, we've observed that no. We, we want to be agile. We want to be flex, flexible. We want to be, um, we want to accelerate growth, uh, but in an authentic way. And, and doing this is recognizing the normal cycles of life. Yes, that's, a, that's probably an organic way to think and look at business. And really, I embrace it. I, I think it's really, really good. I think it's really fun. Uh, it's not for everyone. You may find this uh, difficult because I mean, you're, maybe you're not used to this. You require more stability, and your the rhythm of your of your loops here might be different. I told you that after eight years, I've probably in, you know reinvented Metahelm um, eight times, maybe more. Uh, and for me, it's fine. But I also recognize that if it's too much for you, if that's too 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 you know too fast, you you probably need to slow down a little bit. Another comment I would make here is that typically um, business owners, business founders, uh, think about those loops very very quickly. They always want to get to the next business, but maybe their team, and maybe that's your case. Your team doesn't um, you know can't handle. That, that constant change the same way you do. And you have to respect that. And you have to recognize that if you have a team that seeks more stability and does much better uh, with things that are maybe a little less experimental, maybe you can't, you know, maybe you'll have to um, 
putting additional time and energy in explaining why you constantly iterate, why you have this approach, um, this this the cycle approach in developing uh, the, your services, for instance. So that's a topic for another time. Maybe when I talk, well, when the day I will start talking more about purposeful teaming, I have talked about that, but that's a topic for another time. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you see the, the growth of your business, your personal growth as well as, as a spiral that, that keeps going and going and going and going. Spiral learning, spi spiral business, authentic growth for businesses. I hope this helps. And as always, I welcome, welcome, welcome your comments, your questions, your likes. If you see this video on YouTube or your support. Um, yeah, I hope this helps. Thank you so much.